I randomly came across this um, reading the Berkshire letters and it was just like a perfectly worded, like 400 words. And um, as I went through and read it, I, I then was able to attach it to say what he's talking about is probabilistic thinking. What Buffett is describing is an exercise in probability that improves your chances of picking a stock that will outperform the market over a long time period. And I'll give you guys an example. So, you know, the way that, that Warren and Charlie approach buying businesses is, you know, they start off with what they can understand. Different people understand different businesses. And the important thing is to know which ones you do understand and when you're operating with them within what I call your circle of competence. And that's, again, eliminating the overconfidence looking at, you know, real, just recognizing there's limits to what we can all be experts at and have those, that kind of insight or second level thinking about. Then they're trying to see, okay, where among these businesses, where do we feel like we can have some sort of certainty about what the future earnings will be five, 10, maybe even 15 years out? I mean, we are trying to look at businesses in terms of what kind of cash can they produce if we're buying all of them or will they produce if we're buying part of them? You know, in, um, how certain are we that they're going to be continue to grow? Um, and that's again, that's not easy to do for many businesses, right? Because um, you are making a prediction about an uncertain future or an inference, I should say. Um, <clears throat> and then you know, from that standpoint, they need to look at the. Um, they want to see, okay, do we have a margin of safety? So can we get this at a at a reasonable price? Is this something that you know, if, if the market tanks and you know things kind of correct? we're not in a really bad spot because we, you know, over leverage ourselves, not, not necessarily leverage, but just, you know, bought something at a high, like they're getting a, at least a fair price. That margin of safety concept boils down to getting more value than you're paying. The concept after that though, I think it, it's going down. Um, I feel like I'm missing one thing, but, um, oh, this is the last one. So is there a durable competitive advantage? What we're looking for is businesses with a durable competitive advantage. One of the reasons that's so important is because if you're going to make any sort of guess about what the future earnings are going to be, if, if they have a lot of competition or there's a lot of potential competition, that's going to be something where those, that prediction about the earnings is going to be compromised. That's one of the reasons they've avoided a lot of the high tech stocks um, because those are such fast changing industries and they're also very easily disrupted. And, and again, it's an exercise in probabilities. So they're, they're narrowing the field. And I use this analogy in the episode about if you're taking a multiple choice test, um, you know, you want to have, um, you might come across questions where you're like, I have no idea, right? Like A, B, C, D, E, you're like, I have no clue, but it helps if you just eliminate what you're for sure is wrong, right? Like if you can find one or two, they're like, I know this, is, I don't know the answer, but I know these two are wrong. Well, you just increase the probability of guessing the, the winner. Um, now, you don't want to be guessing on your investments, but you get the idea, like narrowing the field down is really important. I think the easy mistake to make is like getting excited about biotech or, or something that, you know, realistically, unless you're in the space or you're, st you're studying it, you know, I mean, I, I have friends that are investment bankers and analysts and all these different roles where they're like the research they're doing within like a niche of a niche. I mean, it's just it's so beyond what we have time to do. So that's who you're competing with. This has been Compound Money Quietly, the CMQ Investing Podcast. My name is Chris Franco. Thank you for listening. We'll talk soon.